Okay, so we got some surprise tuning to Havoc Demon Hunter, and I'm sure you're all dying to know whether or not these changes affect the hero talent tree that we're going to be playing in Raid and Mythic Plus. So we're going to read through them, and uh, we have a few things particularly uh, important to look at in terms of how these changes will actually affect you and your gameplay. So Havoc Demon Hunter, Aldraki Reaver Wounded Quarry damage increased by 100%. Aldraki Reaver Warblades Hunger damage increased by 100%. Aldraki Reaver Reaver's Glaive damage increased by 15%. These might look like very big numbers, and they are, but you have to remember, generally when you're seeing something increased by a like a triple digit factor, uh, that's kind of telling you that it probably didn't do much damage in the first place. So let's take a look in game. If we open up the Eldraki Reaver tree and we look at Wounded Quarry, Tooltip says it is doing 7,210 physical damage. So that's not very much. That's actually a very small amount. 7,210 physical damage. It is physical. So it's going to be reduced by anything that has any amount of armor. Any damage that's physical is always reduced by the armor of the enemy. Whereas things that are a spell school, like shadow damage, fire damage, whatever, they're not as easily mitigated by mobs or players. So if something is physical, you can pretty much count on it doing a little bit less than what the tooltip is actually telling you. So if we were to increase this by 100%, okay, it's doing 14,000 physical damage. Not that great. Let's look at Warblade's Hunger. Consuming a Soul Fragment causes your next Chaos Strike to deal 13,866 additional damage. So again, if we just increase that, we double that, that's going to bring us up to, okay, 20, probably close to 30,000, which again, in the grand scheme of things, isn't that much. When you have your Chaos Strikes hitting naturally for, you know, just under a mil, probably like between five, 500,000, 800,000, uh, you know, an extra 30,000 isn't all that much. And then we have Reaver's Glaive doing 332,806 physical damage again. So it, because it's physical, it will be reduced. And if we were just to roughly add like 15% onto that, again, it's not that much in the grand scheme of things. But all of these combined, the damage from Reaver's Glaive, Wounded Quarry, and Warblade's Hunger, you add them together, gives you a couple percent of extra damage. So if we were to add it all together, put it into the sim and sort of map it out and see how it's adjusting our damage. It brings us to something like this, 1.5 million. And this is with the most popular Eldraki Reaver build in terms of talents and setup. And if we scroll down here, we can see that the Reaver's Glaive damage is our fifth highest at 5.4%. So that's after having 15% added to it. And we also have Wounded Quarry and Warblade's Hunger at around 2.5% each. So that is after the changes. Now, the thing to remember with Eldraki Reaver is that it is very, very dependent on high uptime for a couple reasons. In terms of the hero talents, we have Art of the Glaive, which really makes us reliant on getting soul fragments. The way that we generate soul fragments the most uh, frequently is through pressing Chaos Strike. Whenever we press Chaos Strike, we have a chance to spawn a lesser soul fragment that we can then pick up. But if we are forced away from the boss, if there's downtime in a, a boss fight, or you have to dodge a mechanic, or you have to do anything like that, that just means you're not pressing Chaos Strike. And if you're not pressing Chaos Strike, you're not generating soul fragments. So we're punished for downtime there. We also have things like Cycle of Hatred, where pressing Blade Dance, Chaos Strike, and Glaive Tempest reduces the cooldown of I-Beam. So when we have forced downtime, we're just not pressing those abilities and we're not reducing the cooldown on our I-Beam. The less we're using our I-Beam, the less that we're in Demonic, which means we have Annihilation and Death Sweep less often. Also have Shattered Destiny, where just the duration of your active demon form is extended by 0.1 seconds every 12 Fury spent. So if, again, if there's forced downtime, you're not spending Fury, you're not extending your demon form. Also, if you're not hitting the boss, you're not proccing Wounded Quarry which is giving you another chance to spawn more soul fragments. There's a lot of things in this build that are super, super reliant on uptime. And in practice, in the actual game, when you go and try to play this, the results that you get are going to be a lot lower than what a sim might be getting because a sim isn't dealing with forced downtime. In a five minute sim, there's no interruptions. They have pure uptime, all five of those minutes, they are blasting the boss. They're gonna be generating a lot more soul fragments than you probably would in practice. So this can be seen, actually, if, if we go to Warcraft Logs, I had to go to the Silken Court Heroic. This is kind of the only fight that I had maybe a suspicion you might be using Eldraki Reaver on. TLDR, you won't. I had to scroll all the way to page 5 to finally find one log 
that used AR, and we found him here. So if we look at their damage breakdown, you can see that Warblade's Hunger was 0.39% of their damage. Wounded Quarry was 0.64% of their damage. Now again, this is before the buffs that we're going to be getting, right? But let's say we added the buffs onto these. Okay, so Warblade's Hunger, we're going to double that. So that's going to bring it to 0. Point, like let's just say roughly 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8. Uh, that's nowhere near what the Sim is getting from Warblade's Hunger. Warblade's Hunger is coming out to be 2.4, and this is with the changes built in, right? So because the Sim has better uptime and better management of everything, its resources, its ability usage, it's getting much more out of those specific things. If we look at Wounded Quarry, again, 0.64%. If we double that, it's nowhere near what it's getting here. Warblade's Hunger, 2.4%. So it's quite different. And again, this is purely because we are not able to play just like the robots are. So again, if we're just looking on Warcraft logs and we're gonna go to Narabar Palace, and we'll look at all of the top parses. Let's go to Heroic, just to make it a bit more relatable to everyone watching. If we look at the top parses for every boss, all of them have used Felsgard. And this isn't just because this is what they've been told to do, right? These are top parsers. These are all people who generally, for the most part, can think for themselves and do their own testing and have come to the conclusion that even if Eldraki Reaver is 1% or 2% ahead, which it actually is before these buffs are even happening, right? Technically, on paper, Eldraki Reaver is simming higher than Felsgard's single target, but we've all come to the conclusion that it's just not worth the hassle. There's too much variance in the gameplay when you actually try to use it. There's RNG in the soul generation. You have to commit a lot more of your focus to the management of your soul fragments and, you know, your... Your pattern as it's called in the in the rotation we have to decide if you're pressing blade dance first or chaos strike first there's also a lot of forced downtime on these bosses right ration on where he flies away and you have to chase him that's forced downtime you're not pressing abilities during that you're not generating soul fragments you're not keeping up your reaver's mark same with algrax for his intermission he burrows down into the ground and your whole raid groups up on the opposite side of the uh, bugs if you're doing that the right strat and you're just standing there doing nothing and then all of the bugs will funnel into you and you start hitting them then. But there is, again, forced downtime on that. As we just scroll through all of this, we're seeing that there are no Eldraki Reaver top parses at all. Even if we go to Raider IO and we look at the top Havocs for Mythic Plus, we go to all of them and they are all running Felsgard. All of them. Because truthfully, Felsgard just has a better... Oh, I'm glad this was just an anime head and not... Uh, a different type of head. God, that scared me. Um, Felsgard just has better, better damage profile for all of these situations. It has really, really good bursts that you can plan around, and it has a sort of acceptable damage in between after a couple buffs that we've got over the course of the past few weeks. But hey, just as I was saying, all of these top bursters here have brains of their own. They all made their own decisions. I highly encourage you to make your own decision as well and at least try out Eldraki Reaver. And if you want to do that, I'll put a link to a build for it down in the description. You can just import the code into your game. So you're taking these talents where you're putting points into Soul Scar and a few of the Throwglaive talents. You're not putting points into Furious Throws because we're not pressing Throwglaive rotationally. And of course, we are taking Initiative and Tactical Retreat to keep up um, at least the Initiative buff. We're not using movement or anything like that but again you have to put in the time to make sure you're pressing your buttons fast enough and that is one of the most looked past things that i've noticed over this expansion so far when people are coming to me and they're saying hey jedith my single target damage is not keeping up with people in raid why is that uh, and then they send me a log and i open it up and i look at it and they're just not pressing their buttons fast enough and if you're not pressing your buttons fast enough Eldraki Reaver isn't going to save you either because it is even more dependent on you pressing your buttons the right amount. Felsgard, you can get by a little bit easier because you have to, because you're carried by your Demon Surge damage and burning blades a little bit more. But with Eldraki Reaver, you are super GCD locked and you have to make sure you are spamming your buttons. But you should definitely try it out and let me know what you think. Build will be down in the description. And yeah, TLDR, I think we'll still just be seeing everyone running Felsgard for Mythic Plus for Raid. It's just easier to play. It's less hassle. And that is worth a lot more than a few potential DPS on paper, right? Because like I said, your performance in-game is going to vary greatly from what you see in The Sims. 
you're not a robot, I'm not a robot, the best players in the world aren't robots, but what we're using as a reference point is a robot. So just keep that in mind, right? Keep that in mind. All right, if you like this video, give it a like, make sure you sub to the YouTube channel, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.